There it goes. Welcome back to the shop, you conquerors of compressors. Today, let's do an autopsy on this Ford Scroll compressor. I changed this compressor out of my uh, E450 a few videos ago, so you guys can go check that out. The compressor seized up and then proceeded to burn up this clutch. I mean, look at the, look at the temperature of this thing. This thing really gave up a fight before it uh, gave up the ghost. So let's figure out what went wrong there. But uh, before I do that, I really want to thank you guys. The channel has really exploded in the last month. You guys uh, have submitted a lot of really cool comments. Uh, I really enjoy reading them and uh, learning. I'm learning a ton from you guys. And I really hope that you guys are learning something from the channel and are entertained. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So speaking of fun, let's tear into this thing and figure out what went wrong. I'd be interested to find out what kind of carnage is in here. I'm going to use this uh, Ryobi uh, impact driver and this old Craftsman set. Now I know you're not supposed to use these with an impact driver, but I don't really, I'm not too worried about this set. So let's dig in. Huh. Look at this. Look at this clutch. Little pieces of uh, clutch material falling out of there, Jesus. may not be how this comes apart. I've never taken one of these apart. There's a big snap ring right here in the back. Okay, that's out. You can see some of the heat damage there too. Here's our uh, coil our electrical coil for inducing the field. This induces a field which pulls that clutch in. Magnetic field pulls this in, pushes it against this, causes the compressor to come on. There's another snap ring holding the coil in place. And I don't know if I have the proper things to remove it the right way. Let's see if we can remove it the wrong way. Okay, here's our electrical coil out of the way. Even that thing saw some heat. Let's see if we can pry this plate off. Inside here we got uh, some radioactive goop and a bunch of ball bearings that are right here. Ball bearing looking things. I don't know what those are all about. But we can see that this thing has like a sort of scroll in it. I guess that's why they'd call it a scroll compressor. But uh, look in the center there. Pieces are broken off and they're over here in the uh, other end. So that's what caused the ultimate failure of this compressor. There's a broken pieces inside. Okay, let's pull this apart a little further. Okay, so we can see here that it looks like there's an eccentric. So that's a counterbalance and an eccentric all these little round bits that uh, I think these balls were on like that. Oh, I know what was going on. So these bearings ran on these circular tracks on both ends so that as the shaft turned, let's turn that. See how the scroll compressor or see how the scroll gyrates? Those bearings would have kept it clocked the right way, those bearings would have ridden around these, these little tracks on either side here, like that. So the balls would have just went like that. This thing is fascinating, actually. I am not disappointed. Now let's look over here in the other end. The hole for our suction port, which is the larger one, is here. And our high pressure port is right here in the middle of the scroll. So it pushes the fluid 
It gyrates in such a way that it squeezes the fluid along the spiral path. That is amazing. That's amazing. I don't know if this, you know what? We can pull this out. Because I saw bolts on the back here and let's pull those out. Okay, here's our uh, case for the compressor. Our back port comes through in the very back here. You can barely see it, but there's a hole. And that's your high pressure port. So it goes along that scroll and it goes through there. Let's clean off this radioactive goop. I'm gonna have differently abled babies from handling all this stuff. And I'm doing it for you guys. So if you're enjoying this, hit that subscribe button. Back here, we got a uh, reed valve. See that? It's gonna cover and uncover that port that leads to the high pressure port. It's got an O-ring here that seals it to the case. So that seals it to the case. The high pressure fluid uh, refrigerant comes out of here. Can't come back because that reed valve would close behind it. So it's forced to go through that little tiny port in the back there that we pointed out earlier, out to the high pressure side. All right, got a magnet. That's non-magnetic. I'm guessing it's aluminum. Ooh, the back wall is magnetic, but the coil itself, the spiral here, is not. Oh, I see what's happening is there's a there's a metal there's a metal insert here along this face that follows the contour of the aluminum spiral. All right. So, anyways, yeah. So we can see that steel liner in the bottom there. It spirals, starts here, and spirals all the way through. And that's for the seal surface that's running right here along the snail. And uh, this one has got a sealing surface here. And this side has also got a steel liner. Starts here, see it? Goes in here like that. We can line this up by where the seal ends in the liner. In the liner ends. Here, we can put it right here. Like that. And so I'm guessing, yeah, so it goes like this. So a little, a little bit of pressure goes in there, or uh, working fluid, and then it squeezes along the walls like that, very quickly in a gyrating motion. I can actually feel air pulsing out of here. So that's, that's how that's working. And in the middle here, it would experience pressure pulses as it forced the fluid into this central hole. And since this material is aluminum, since it's aluminum, it doesn't have an infinite fatigue life. So steel, if you keep it under a certain load, can have an infinite fatigue life. It can serve its purpose forever if you keep it under a low enough load. But aluminum, if it's in cyclical conditions, uh, will always fail eventually. If you keep the, lo the loads low, the cycles might be, I mean, a hundred years, a million, a, you know, a gazillion cycles but eventually it will always fail. And that's probably what we're seeing here. Let's try to pour a little oil in here and see if we can get it to pump out through the top by gyrating it like that. Squirt some fluid in there. Let's try a little bit more fluid. I have a feeling too much of the snail is gone. There it goes. See it shooting out of that thing? Ah. Uh, the things I do. It's my cutting oil. I'll suck that back up. Perfect. But you saw there were still pulses as it cycles through. It forces the fluid along here between the two walls of the scrolls. And so those pulses are what fatigue this aluminum, caused a failure after about 100,000 miles, well beyond Ford's warranty period. Perfect engineering. That's cool. I just love cool things like that. I'm glad we were able to figure it out. So, all right, you guys, uh, any questions or comments, drop them down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm going to go wash this cancer off my hands.